Welcome everyone to growing your reach and traffic with Pinterest and learning all the secrets of how to pin like a pro. <laughs> My name is Paola Mendez and I am the founder of the Blogger Union. The Blogger Union is a network of blogger communities dedicated to growing our members' brands and incomes through meetups and workshops just like this one. We have uh, in-person meetings throughout the U.S. in different cities that we call chapters. I run the Miami chapter called the South Florida Bloggers, but we have chapters all across the U.S. We have the New York City Bloggers, D.C. Bloggers, Houston Bloggers, Minneapolis Bloggers, and a bunch more. So if you'd like to find out about that, please check out thebloggerunion.com. And my personal blog is Coral Gables Love if you would like to go see what that's all about. I am really excited to introduce our speaker today. Her name is Tenille Martinez, and she is a Pinterest expert who goes by the Miss Virtual Maven. <laughs> you can find all about her at MissVirtualMaven.com. Welcome, Tenille. Hello. Hi, everyone. I am so happy to be here and speaking with Paola and the Blogger Union and all of you guys. Many, a few that I know, so I'm so happy to be here. Awesome. We are so excited to dive into Pinterest. But before we get started, would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself? Okay, so I am, when I'm not a Pinterest expert and strategist, which is like all the time, like I told you, I can talk a lot about this, uh, this platform that I absolutely love. Um, I'm also a middle school teacher. So I am in the trenches with the lovely children educating. And as you can tell, I, I love I just love to talk and, and engage and help others become better at whatever it is that they're striving for. So I have worked with bloggers, I have worked with brands, entrepreneurs, coaches, you name it. I have grown with, um, I have worked with so many people to get their Pinterest game on. So that is just a little bit about me. I live in South Florida. I usually attend the Fort Lauderdale chapter meetings for the blogger union when they're in session and sometimes venture down into miami when we get a chance that's true <laughs> so, and when i'm not doing all of that i'm usually on pinterest or instagram instagram is is the second favorite social media platform and one of my loves is perusing all the colorful stuff so like paola's brand coral <laughs> gables love so many colors so many <laughs> phenomenal and love stickers books and notebooks i don't know if you could tell <laughs> we definitely can so thank you so much so uh we're gonna let you take over and share this presentation that you have about pinterest but if anyone has a question feel free to add your question to the chat and once tanil is done with her presentation we will switch to a q a and we will address all of your questions so take it away, Tanil. All right, Paola, do you just see the presentation? We're good? Yes, perfect. Okay, wonderful. All right, so like Paola said, thank you for introducing me. My name is Tanil Martinez, and I'm also known as Miss Virtual Maven on all socials. And this is just a little snippet of all the Pinterest graphics that I've created for my account. When I am not working on Pinterest accounts, I'm usually blogging about it on my website. So you can feel free to check info out there. All right, so this is the question that I always get. What is Pinterest? And a lot of people lump it into the social media group, which in a, in a way it is, but technically it's a visual search engine. So it's very important that people remember that when they start to look at it in the business aspect. So it's a visual search engine where people come to find solutions, be inspired, get ideas, and take action. So pinners are future thinkers. They're going to the platform for a specific purpose. It's not like Instagram that we pop in to see what's happening with the latest influencer or to see somebody's stories or we're on Facebook in our Facebook groups, or if we're on Twitter catching up on the latest tweets, Pinterest is totally solution focused and inspirational that we want something better, so we're going there in search of, of something. 
So like I said, I've been a Pinterest strategist and I've worked with bloggers and brands for over three years. I've been a teacher for way longer and I'm going into my 19th year of teaching. So it's been, it's been a long ride. And when I'm not doing all of that and looking at stickers and shopping and reading books and writing a notebook, um, I'm usually cultivating and building relationships through networking. That is why the Blogger Union is so very dear to me in terms of I've met so many great people and they let me talk about Pinterest. <laughs> it's a win-win. So how I got started on Pinterest. Um, many years ago, like a decade ago, I was in search of lesson plans for my class. And Pinterest was one of them, um, was a platform that started to show up in the Google feed. And I saw that there were lesson plans there. So I had a problem and I was out looking for a solution and I ended up on this platform called Pinterest. Now at that time you needed to be invited to come onto the platform. It wasn't that, you know, we can go in like we are now and just sign up. No, you needed to be invited. So I had to wait a little bit to get onto the platform. And when I got on the platform, I didn't realize how many people had shared their, their lesson plans. Are you recording, Paula? Yes. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> I didn't see the recording. Um, so when I got there, I had a problem. I was looking for a solution and I found it. Did I purchase some lesson plans? I sure did. It was saving me hours upon hours of doing something that I kind of didn't want to do, that someone had already done. So that's perfect, win-win. So what I want you guys to keep in mind is the customer's journey. People come to Pinterest in search of solutions for their problems, support for an idea, or resources for what they can imagine. It's their journey. And as marketers and content creators, I want you to think about that person that you create this content for and how can we get them to their end? So is it solutions? Is it providing them a product? Is it providing them inspiration? I want you to always keep that in mind when we're thinking of Pinterest. So like I was saying, why do people come to Pinterest? Solutions, ideas, planning, and action. So what's wonderful about Pinterest is that people take action on Pinterest. They, even though it takes time for Pinterest to show up on our end as bloggers and entrepreneurs, our, the people that are on Pinterest are planning. Then they will take action. And I'm gonna give you some stats as we move forward to show you the power of this platform. So currently, and this is most recent, and I believe it's from July 30th, there, are, there were 400, and 400 million monthly active users in search of inspiration, ideas, and solutions on Pinterest. So people are actively coming to the platform in search of something. And as content creators, I want you to keep that in mind as we move forward and we start to develop what your account's gonna look like and the pins that you're gonna create and the information that you're gonna use to get on there. Now, additional stats, there were 240 billion pins saved, billions. So people are on there on the platform and they're using it actively. So if you're not on Pinterest and you're a content creator, we need you to be on there because you are creating valuable content and you definitely, you definitely need to share your value with the people that are in search of it. And an additional stat, there were 5 billion boards created. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what a board is and how do you set it up so people can get there and see your content. All right. So who uses Pinterest? And if you see my little, uh, Website at the bottom, that's where I gather all of my information. We have Gen Zs, we even have men, and we have millennials. Normally, well, originally, this platform targeted a lot of women. And now, almost everyone is on the platform, except for the kids. The kids are on TikTok. <laughs> 
<laughs> as long as this video is over. <laughs> so what I want you to think about, look at the look at the stats and the projection of the stats. Everything is on the up and up, especially with the pandemic. When the pandemic hit, my clients' accounts ran through the roof. People decided that they were gonna cook more at home. Now they had to homeschool. Now they had to build offices. And that's where you saw the spike of how to jazz up your outfits from the waist up started to appear. So this is definitely a solution focused platform that gives you inspiration, it gives you resources. So everyone should pretty much be on this visual uh, search engine. Don't only take it as a social media platform. All right, so how do I get started? So I don't know in the chat if you guys can, is there, everyone pretty much has a Pinterest account, correct? I think I, yeah, so I'm seeing, I'm seeing some, net, some nods. All right, so how you get started is, if you're just a consumer and you have a Pinterest account, you've been saving pins, fantastic. You're on a great start. You know how the, how the Pinterest platform works from the consumer side. Now, as a business, as a content creator, a blogger, entrepreneur, a brand, you have to sign up for Pinterest for your business account, for a business account. And it's free. You don't have to pay anything extra. What it's giving you access to is analytics. It's giving you access to claiming your website. It's giving you access to a slew of things because Pinterest cannot operate without you, the content creator. As great as Pinterest is, they need the content creator. And as we move forward, I'm gonna share more about that um, because now Pinterest has created certain things where they wanna make sure that they have, um, that they're supporting the content creator that is producing all the resources and solutions on this platform. So before I move on, it also lets you know, as a business, how many times your pins get seen, the kind of impressions that you're getting, the monthly views, the engagements, and what, are, what engagements are. If you ever hear that term for Pinterest, it is a total number of clicks, saves. Saves is like what you pin to your board. Close-ups, people take a look at your pin, especially on mobile. Not necessarily that they click on it, but they were interested. So they open it up and they look at it, but they don't do anything, but Pinterest marks it down. And carousel swipes. So those are like similar to the swipes that you see on Instagram, where you can move from one graphic to the other. It has that on Pinterest as well. And it allows you to have rich pins. Now, a few people are always confused about rich pins and what rich pins does for your account is that it syncs information from your website to your pins. So at the very bottom, you'll see that you have your, your face or your logo of your company and then, or your brand, and then it has your name and probably a snippet from your website, especially if you pin directly from your website. All right. And I'm not sure if I said what impressions was. Impressions is how many times your pins were seen on Pinterest. So when you see those impressions that are like 5,000 impressions on a pin, that's what it means. It was seen that many times. Did I lose you guys? No, we're here. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, no, because something popped up and it said presenter window. And I, I was like, all right, okay. All right, so Pinterest operates on keywords. Keywords, and that's what the SEO of Pinterest is for. It's all about keywords, and you can keyword everything on Pinterest. Now, that does not mean keyword stuff. Do not keyword stuff your, your Pinterest accounts. It's not great for the readability and accessibility for the people that are consuming your platform. You wanna make sure that it, it's like reading a sentence. You're giving information, but in a readable way. 
So what we can keyboard, keyword, we can keyword the bio and the title, board titles, board descriptions, pin titles, pin descriptions, and you can use hashtags. Now, hashtags, I, I have to be very honest, use one to five hashtags. This is not Instagram. You shouldn't be using about 30. And I would say pick one and use the most relevant one. So for example, if you are writing about food and it's a dinner recipe or it's a chicken recipe or it's a keto, use one hashtag, use a hashtag keto, hashtag chicken, hashtag whatever it is. And you can do all of that search in the search bar on Pinterest. So I put an image right here at the very bottom so you can see what it looks like. There, that is your keyword support search tool. You type in anything and it will show you exactly what can pop up. Now, before I go to my next slide, that's gonna show you a little snippet of how you can do the search. I want you to be aware, board titles also get searched for. Anything that pops up, let's say, going back to the chicken recipe. If you put chicken recipes as a blog title, uh, as a board title, and people are in search of chicken recipes, those boards, pins, um, the board descriptions, if you have chicken in your bio title, like you're the chicken queen, it's gonna come up. So I want you guys to be aware of how powerful this platform is. So taking a look at the search bar, and I'm gonna show you, this was, I did this last night just to demonstrate how, how it picks up on what we're typing. Notice in the first image, I didn't even type out chicken completely. I just put CH. And it gave me a slew of things that people are searching for on Pinterest. Without, without me giving it any more prompting, any more letters, so chicken recipes, chicken breast recipes, and then look, character art, somebody searching for character art. And then you notice chicken and then cheesecake and, and it goes all the way through. I give you another demonstration in the middle where it talks about easy. And I just typed in easy, easy dinner recipes. And anything that somebody was looking for in the terms of easy pops up. And then if you take a look, it says all boards named easy. Then it gave you Further down, all accounts named easy. So if I were to change my title to easy Pinterest queen, it might pop up under that board. I mean, under that search. And then let's take a look at at home. So you can see, have an idea of get creative with what you're typing in the search, in the search bar to provide oh. the keywords that you're gonna use. This is your SEO. Okay, so. Sorry, you, you froze no, no, for a no. second, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I thought you had a question, that's why I paused. <laughs> All right, so that is, I don't know if I. So oh. just to clarify, so yes. when it comes to Pinterest SEO and we're talking mm -hmm. about keywords, yes. what you're recommending here is to go to the search bar and try to enter words related to your niche so that yes. you can see what Pinterest suggests. And because yes. those suggestions are what people are looking for. So yes. you can, so for example, if you are, have chicken recipes and you type in chicken, you can see that people are looking for chicken recipes, chicken breast recipes, chicken salad recipes. So you can use those as ideas for future content, or you can use those as your keywords when you add them to your, your recipe boards or your pins or, 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 maybe even yeah, the title of, of your username. Yes, absolutely, okay. <laughs> absolutely. And what it's showing you in the search bar is specifically what people are typing. It's the right. most popular thing that people are typing. Exactly. So it's not, it's not trying to predict what you may type, but it's letting you know that this is, this is what people have just with what you're typing, specific letters. So right. before I move on, because I don't think I included this, to add boards and to add graphics 
if you take a look at the bottom search bar, now my account is a business account. That's why you see the business at the far left. The create, that's where you're gonna create your boards. That's where you're gonna create your pins. That's where you're gonna create stories now. They have stories similar to the stories that are on Instagram that you can upload. And we're gonna talk about that once we get to that slide. But I want you to be aware that is where you go and upload all of your graphics, your pins, anything related to putting it on the platform. So pin graphics, we always get this question and everyone wants to know, well, tell me the secrets. Tell me what's gonna work on Pinterest. Um, I, I wanna know how this is gonna work and will this work? Well, I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna give you the specifications and I'm gonna give you my experience with the, the numerous bloggers and entrepreneurs that I've worked with and their graphics. So these are the specs. You wanna create high quality vertical pins that include your branding. Um, you want to be aware that it should be a JPEG or PNG. It should be two to three ratios. So that's 600 by 900 or 1,000 by 1,500 pixels because if it's larger than that, Pinterest will cut it off. So let's say you have this really cool infographic and it falls out of that two to three ratio, Pinterest will cut it off and it will require the people to click on it. Now, if people, and it may cut it off at the top and the bottom. So you don't know exactly how Pinterest is gonna cut it off, so it's best to stay within the ratio. Um, you can create a variety of styles. So like I said, an infographic, you can do quotes, you can do um, carousel styles where it's like you swipe the images just like you would on Instagram. And it, it, there's even video. We're going to talk about video as well. There are some people that have branded graphics like how I have mine. That's one of my pin graphics. There are other people that just include pictures. And within the pictures, this is why keywords is so important because on this pin, even though you see it that way, Pinterest is able to pick up the text that's on that pin, as well as the keywords that are in the title of the pin and description. So it's very important, everything that you lay out on the pin visually, as well as a title, description, and that hashtag that you might use. And I do recommend just use at least one to five. Don't go any more than that. So now, Taking a look at Pinterest graphics. These are the things that make people click on graphics. There is not one set way or form or design that is better than the other. I've worked with, with entrepreneurs and with bloggers that they've created graphics that are on brand and it's gotten some traction. And I had this one blogger who created this really off brand and she's like, oh my God, it's so ugly. It doesn't even match anything. The colors don't match. Well, believe it or not, that pin took off and, and generated so much traffic to her blog, to her blog that I said, don't touch it, let it run. And she's like, oh, but it's like blue and green and orange. And I was like, don't touch it. It's pushing traffic to your website. So when people wanna know, well, what kind of graphics should I create? Test it out with your account. That's why you have the business account and my recommendation is to test it out. You'll see the analytics. You'll see what works for your audience and you'll see what works within a brand. And I just say be open to the process. So you wanna make sure that your graphics are visually appealing. So they help the pinners imagine the outcome of, with your content. So if, you're, if it's home reno, if, it's a, if you're a food blogger, the end product, if it's um, something dealing with homeschooling, if it's dealing with uh, crafts, fashion, you wanna show the end product of what they're gonna get. You never wanna show something that's negative aspect, like someone sad or um, just in the dumps. You don't wanna show anything like that. You wanna show what's going to be their outcome and that's gonna entice the click. 
They want to see happy. They want to see peaceful. They want to see joyful. They want to imagine that trip to a nice, beautiful island. That's what you want to show on that pin. And then you want to be original. You want to think outside of the box or what you see on the platform. That's why I say you can go out of your brand colors, give it a try, because you never know the uh, of what you're going to get from the other side with testing out something new, something different. And then, like I was saying, you want positive images, positive, the positive end result, not anything negative. Don't start with the negative at the very beginning, but the positive end result. And then it has to be relevant. Is it within reach for them? Is it something that's going to, and we're talking about the graphic of the pin because the blog post can be totally different. It can showcase everything else. But on that pin, we only have seconds to entice that click. We only have seconds for them to save our content. So you want to make sure that it's relevant and actionable. So you can even put, grab your, your freebie to having a traffic, a robust traffic Pinterest account. Put that on, on the front of the pins. And when you're on Pinterest, I want you to take a look as a consumer, what do you see? What is grabbing your eye? What is making you click? What is making you save? And that's going to give you ideas as to how you should create your graphics as well. So the algorithm, I always get questions about the algorithm and there are algorithm changes. So when I first started on Pinterest many, many moons ago, the only pins that were being shown were the older pins. So people that have been on Pinterest for a while, they were gaining traction. So I was working with a lot of bloggers and it would take a lot of work to get newer pins to show up. Well, Pinterest has changed the algorithm now where they're favoring new content, which is great for that blogger that's just starting now, that is putting all of these, um, these tips into place and having different pins. What that is also saying to the more seasoned blogger is now I have to create new pins. And that's where that topic of fresh pins comes out. New pins to drive traffic to my older content, to that content that was very popular a month, years ago. So Pinterest wants you to add new content, new pins to the platform which they call fresh pins. Now you can do fresh pins for your older blog content. It doesn't mean that you have to create new content on your website. What they do want is for you to create new graphics. Now, and I say this with care plan and I'm, I'll probably repeat it a couple of times. When you're creating new fresh pins and you upload them onto Pinterest, do not upload 10 new fresh pins to the same blog website. And I'll repeat that again. If you're creating content for your, uh, if you're creating graphics for your content and you're uploading them on Pinterest, do not put all 10 pin graphics going to the same place on Pinterest at the same time. Also don't do that on Tailwind because that Pinterest will see you as a spammer and they will shut your account down. And they will say, sorry, it looks like you had some indication of spamming and they will shut it down. They won't send you an email like, hey, we saw that you were doing this. No, they will shut down and then you would have to go in and try to get your account back up. There have been some that have been successful because they realized that it was a mistake. And then there's others that have not. So I just want you to be very careful. So someone was asking, what mm -hmm. is the, how many pins should you post at a time to one blog post? Uh, I'm going to get to that. Two? I'm going to get to, no, no, no. I'll get to that. Cause that's going to be part of what you should, how you should pin. Okay. Okay. So video pins is something new and it's, it's on the up and up on Pinterest. And, and I say that with very careful, and measured words because I'm still seeing that for some accounts, it's bringing more, tr more views on Pinterest. But I want you guys to remember that our goal 
is to always push them to our content. We don't own Pinterest. We don't, in, we don't own Instagram. We don't own Facebook. We don't own anything but the land that we own, and that's our website. So my recommendation, I say dabble with the video pins. Go ahead and get the video pins up and put it on um, on Pinterest and I can, we'll discuss if you don't have videos, how you can do that. And it's pretty simple, but give it a try because the views are up. There's 200% year over year that people are using, um, that are consuming the videos and 55% of pinners likely to buy after seeing video. Now that is if you have a product, even if you have a digital product, you're able to do this. And you can do it with one of my favorite tools, which is Canva. So we'll talk about that more as we go on. But I do want you, I don't wanna discourage you from, from not using videos because the stats are showing us that they are effective, but just be open to different things. Don't, don't just bank on just Pinterest graphics. Don't just bank on videos. Give your, give your content a variety to see who it attracts. All right, and these are the specs that you would need to upload a video. Now, the video length could be a minimum of four seconds and I think up to 15 minutes. I don't recommend anyone put up to 15 minutes of video on Pinterest. I mean, you could give it a try and then let me know how that goes. <laughs> But I've seen what it, what's happened is like a few, a few sec, not even like 15 seconds to maybe two minutes. And what I found is like one of my food blogger clients, she did a video that started with the process and the ingredients, but then she didn't put everything on there. She, her last slide was um, for more recipe tips or the, I forgot how she worded it at the end, um, to click to go to the website. Now, when you click on the video on Pinterest, it, it just plays and it stops it. It doesn't take you to the site. You have to go down onto the link at the bottom and that's where you click and that's when it takes you to, to your website. So I want you to be aware of that. You can even put um, specifications even on the video, a little blurb, a caption, click on the link below to, to access the recipe or for more easy recipes. Look, you can, you can get very creative with the videos. And then the ratios, this is something else to consider. They prefer square, which is one to one. This is similar to Instagram. And then vertical, the, the two to three, four to five, nine to 16. There's different specifications. All right, so you have your account up, you have your graphics up, you even put a video. So kudos to you if you did that. So what do you do now? All right, so now we're gonna develop your pinning strategy. And this is where we get to how many, how many times do we pin, what do we pin, where do we pin, all of that. So first things first, you have to be consistent with the platform. You have to pin daily, and you have to pin, pin frequently. Now, you're probably thinking, well, how am I gonna do that if I'm creating content and I, you know, I have a life outside, I mean, I actually have to clean and cook and do all these things. Well, there is this wonderful tool called, or wonderful, yes, tool, I, Tailwind, that is absolutely phenomenal and will keep you pinning every single day. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. Follow us, uh, offer to share, to share her, her Tailwind uh, platform and we're gonna take a look. So using Tailwind, you can pin manually, which is fine if you have that kind of time, wonderful. I'm so happy for you. Um, I pin manually when I'm just consuming, like I'm, I wanna save stuff for upcoming events and that's just me as a consumer but as a on the business side i want you guys to utilize your time efficiently efficiently and effectively so tailwind is a great tool and then what you want to do once you're on there is to pin to relevant boards 
You don't want to pin all of the boards on your account because if it's not relevant, then what happens is that Pinterest picks up on that. And they see that people aren't clicking on that pin it on that board. So you want to make sure that your pins are in the right place where they're, where people are going to find it. So if going back to the food blogger, if you have this chicken recipe and it's fairly easy and it's four ingredients and it's using the air fryer, notice all the different boards that I can create for that one food blogger. So they might have an air fryer board. They might have a chicken recipe board, easy dinner chicken recipe board, four ingredient recipe. So notice how my brain is working and I'm trying to figure out what are the different boards that I could put that one pin on that's going to be, that's going to be viewed by the followers of that board. Because people can just follow one specific board. They may not follow you, but they can follow that board or they'll follow you and all of your boards. So you definitely want to provide content that's going to be relevant to specific boards. Now, pin slowly, you have a question, Paula? Yes, so, okay, okay. so we have this one pin and it, it fits in five different boards. Yes. Do we pin in this one moment to all those five boards or do we stagger them? Stagger. Okay. Stagger. We never want to pin the same pin consecutively back to back because that's when Pinterest is like the little, the little call. Red flag. <laughs> yes, flag and bells and whistles start to go off and Pinterest is like, hey, what are you doing? No, so you want to stagger and that's where you can, let's say, okay, today's Thursday. I always get my days mixed up and if you're on my Instagram, you know that's my struggle. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, and you watch me, yes. So Thursday, I may pin to one board and I might wait until maybe Tuesday of the following. And then maybe Wednesday of the third weekend or Friday. So I want to stagger it. I don't want to do today, this board, two hours from today, that's uh, a different board. No, stagger it from day to day. Give yourself some ample time to gain traction. So, and, and that's, that is something that's worked for with me for me so i highly recommend that and then when i want when i say pin slowly then increase if you are new to pinterest take your time with pinning start with one to five pins a day just get your gain your self traction let let pinterest get to know you because pinterest needs to get to know you so they know who to send your pins to then as you start to look at your analytics, which is why you want a business account on Pinterest, you're able to measure, well, this pin is taking off. Let me pin this pin more to other places. Let me create some more fresh pins for this, this um, blog post because I see that it's taking off. That's how you make your decisions and that's when you start to increase. So don't start out of the gate, pinning 30 pins a day when you don't have, I, I, it would be just too much. I say, take your time, increase, and make decisions based on the data, all right? And like I said, don't spam Pinterest. And I keep saying it because I've had, I've had clients that um, have come to me after the fact, and we tried to get their account back. There's been few that it was a mistake. They didn't mean to, to send out the pins the way they did and we were able to activate their accounts again. And then there have been others that we were not able to get their account back and they have to start from fresh. So just don't spam. <laughs> okay, so useful tools. Um, at the end of this presentation, I'm gonna send, there's gonna be a link where you can sign up to get a list of my favorite tools and some more tips and tricks and just a guidance for you. Um, but for now, these are three of my favorite tools. So Tailwind for sure, it's a scheduling tool that selects the best time for you to pin your content to specific boards. So this is wonderful because it lets you select the board where you wanna send it. And then Tailwind will help you and guide you guide you in terms of what time is best for that content to go out. 
So if you're busy, let's say creating content, you're a blogger, you're typing a blog post, you're not necessarily waiting, oh, okay, at four o'clock, I need to pin this. No, Tailwind does it for you and it'll pick the best time. And then Canva. Canva is my absolute favorite design tool. I know there's others that they use Photoshop and they use PicMonkey Pic and um, some even use PowerPoint to create graphics. Have at it. Uh, I'm going to go the Canva route. Canva was easiest for me to handle. I've tried Photoshop. That was a mess. Um, <laughs> Canva works for me. There's templates available on Canva. And um, it's pretty much you type in what you want to create and it's there. This presentation was created on Canva. So it tells you, that tells you how much I love this platform. <laughs> And then there's also Creative Market. So if you guys don't know about Creative Market, that's where you can buy tons of templates um, for Pinterest graphics, even presentations. Uh, you can even buy website themes. It's just a slew of stuff. And every Monday, uh, it's like Christmas because they send you six freebies that you can access that you don't have to purchase, but they send it to you in your inbox and you can get new fonts, new new templates whatever it is that they're offering so it's always christmas on mondays for me <laughs> <laughs> so those are some of the useful tools all right so as we're nearing the end this is something that i have to stress to you guys as content creators i want you to remember the customer's journey why are they going to pinterest so when you remember that and their purpose as to why they're going there, the whole reason they're coming to Pinterest, I want you to think about how can you be the solution to their problems? How can you provide the inspiration or ideas or that unique perspective as a blogger, as a content creator that you can only provide to those people? I want you to think about that when um, you're searching for keywords. Don't only, because I know sometimes as a blogger, as a content creator, we get stuck in the words that we're using because we're typing it so much. But dig into Pinterest, take some time and start to type in different things and just look at what the content is showing. Um, what is showing up on your feed? What is showing up that um, is curated specifically for you? Because Pinterest has made it now where the algorithm is telling us that if certain people click on video pins, they'll get shown more video pins. If they get um, shown infographics, they'll get, if they click on it, they'll be shown more infographics. So that's why I say create a variety of, of Pinterest graphics and videos to attract people at different stages. We're all different learners. We all, we all gravitate to, to different graphics, different ways of taking in information. And I want you to present the same to these people on Pinterest. Awesome. Thank you yeah. so much. <laughs> You're welcome. And this, if you put in that bit.ly link, it is going to send you some tips and some links to some of my favorite products. And it'll also keep us connected if you, um, oh, and I forgot to tell you guys, if you take pictures if you wanted to, to put it on Instagram. I forgot <laughs> that little tidbit at the very beginning. But definitely, if you want to stay in connect connection with me, I'm always on Instagram when I'm not on, but I'm mostly on my clients' Pinterest accounts, not necessarily my <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. All right, guys. So definitely check out that bit.ly link that Barbara yes. just shared in the chat. And before we jump into the Q&A, which we have saved all of your questions, I'm going to share, walk you guys really quickly through Tailwind that uh, Tanil shared. And somebody asked, what do you think about Planoli instead of Tailwind? And I'm going to show you why when it comes to Pinterest, Tailwind is really the best solution. So yes. if you haven't signed up for Tailwind, I, I just shared a link for Tailwind. And if you click on that, you get one month free of Tailwind Plus. And uh, you can check it out and see if it's something that you wanna try. So 
after the month, they do charge a fee. I believe it's $11 a month. That's what it was when I mm -hmm. signed up. <laughs> I still? think it's around that. Okay. Yes. So, all right. So if you guys want to quickly click along in that link and you can follow along and I'll show you a few of the things of why uh, Tailwind is so great. So let me share my screen. Oh, dear. <laughs> no, the thunder. Oh, okay. <laughs> All righty. So if you go to Tailwind, the great thing about Tailwind is that it helps you schedule your pins. So I'm going to go here to my scheduler, and this is the account that I have for Coral Gables Love. So it has a bunch of different features, and it helps you not be spammy. So you can select how many uh, slots a day you want to pin, and you can select what times a day. So you have your schedule here. And um, as you can see, I am scheduled through August 22nd. <laughs> You're full. So, <laughs> we're full. And another through. feature, Paola, notice at the very top where it says all clear. Uh -huh. It lets you know Tailwind is a partner of Pinterest. And it lets you know whether what you're pinning or the frequency of your pinning is spammy. So they try to prevent that spammy behavior before you can even get yourself into trouble. Right. So that's, that's one of the reasons why Tailwind, I mean, it has so many other features that it's just amazing. <laughs> so what uh, Tanil was saying is that, let's say we have this one pin and it fits in 10 of your different boards because it's a recipe and it's family friendly and it's all these different things. So what I do, my strategy is I definitely don't want to get flagged as a spammer. So I do, I uh, schedule that one pin with um, a time interval. And so you can see if you scroll down in my schedule, there's some pins that are way out in the future that are scheduled. And those are pins that I pin that way. I put this um, visit to Bachur and I separate it to be pinned to each of those boards with like a month in between. So if you scroll, you're going to see that a month goes by and there the pin shows up again. So yeah. this is something that um, Tailwind is really good at. But uh, so I'll show you really quickly how that works. For Tailwind, you installed a little a bookmarklet. Uh, it's a little app on your browser. And then when you go to your actual uh, website, um, you go to an article, let's say this article. And then for Pinterest, you can pin any image. So what um, Tanil was talking about is that Pinterest doesn't like it that if you, put, if you pin this exact image to 10 different boards. It wants to have di original content. But if you scroll on this article, you'll see that there are different images. So you, each time you pin a different image uh, from, from the same article, that way you are not spamming Pinterest. So as you can see, this image is just a photograph and this image below is the Pinterest graphic. And so that's how I'm differentiating those two images and I can use that same image and make two different pins that Pinterest is going to consider original content. And here yeah. are the different things that Tanil was talking about, what a pin should look like. It's the graphic, it's the final product, and it has the text the, the, uh, with the call to action. So, okay, let's say we want to uh, schedule this pin through Tailwind. You hover over it and it's the little Tailwind schedule button shows up. And you're logged into Pinterest. And here you can um, select all of your boards that you want to put it in. So let's say you select three different boards that you want to put it in. And here you can use the button that says use interval. And that's where you tell it that you want to post it once a week, once a month, once a whatever. And you can use open time slots or you can tell Tailwind use the optimized uh, time that you think would be the best for my pin to perform. Oh, okay, Paola. I'm sorry. It, yeah, it's not showing us the what pops up and Your that's what you guys sliding. aren't seeing. It's like a pop up <laughs> and it'll show you the pin. So okay. there you can select if you want to send it to Tailwind Tribes, to specific boards, that. 
that, you go. That's what she's, <laughs> she's okay, looking Can at. you see it now? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I, I never know what, what you were talking about because that's all I do. <laughs> okay, perfect. So when you, okay, so here's the, here's this pop-up window and here you select what boards you want to put it in. So here's where you select the boards and then it, this uh, button, which went away because I just, here, let me start again. <laughs> okay. Can you see the pop-up window now? Yes. Okay. Great. So you pick the boards that you want for this pin. Let's say it's two boards. We don't care. And then here, this button is where you select the interval so that you don't get into spammy problems. When you mm -hmm. click on that, you can select you want it to post every seven days or every month or every three months. You pick that. And then these yep. little buttons down here, you can select uh, open time slots, which were the, the little boxes that you had seen before or these is optimized so that Tailwind picks the best uh, performing time for it to publish it for you. So that's when it comes to uh, scheduling your pins. But the other great thing that pin, uh, Tailwind has when it comes to Pinterest, why people always recommend Tailwind over other schedulers is that Tailwind has something called tribes. So tribes are groups where people pin each other, repin each other. <laughs> so when you are here in this same window, you can click add to tribes and you can select which tribes you want to add it to. And then why is that important? I'll show you quickly what a tribe is and we'll leave it there because <laughs> we have a few questions we want to address in the Q&A. Um, which by the way, sorry, mentioned the South Florida Bloggers tribe, which I just saw. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no worries. So. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to share this other link here in the chat. Uh, and the tribes is, it's like group boards on steroids. Right. So group boards on Pinterest have taken a dive in terms of people were just throwing their content there and yeah, not necessarily repinning. But exactly. on tribes, everyone is active. And it lets you know whether you're pinning content from tribes or not. So exactly. they want team players. If you're not a team player, then you might get kicked out of you the tribe. You might get kicked out. Absolutely. So yes. I started a new tribe that is just for blogger union members. And it's that link right there. So if you signed up for the test, the test trial, you can test our tribe in the blogger union. So if you click on that link, you can join the tribe. Um, okay. So let's, the, when you go back to Tailwind, can you guys see Tailwind now? Yes. Okay. So when you go back to Tailwind and you go here on the navigation, you click on tribes. That is where the magic happens. And you have to first find a tribe. So if, if it's your first time, so you can go here and click find a tribe. And then you can search by your niche. You can search by location. You can search by all kinds of things, or you can search by blogger union and find all the blogger union tribes. So if you want to join the South Florida bloggers or whatever. So, um, so that's how you join a tribe. You can join up to five with a, a regular plan. You have to pay a little more if you want to have more tribes in your plan. Mm -hmm. But definitely five is more than enough to get started with. Yes. So what does a tribe look like? So here I'm actually in your tribes mm -hmm. and I'm looking at the South Florida bloggers tribe. So here you can see, well, we don't have too much content there. Let's go to Florida Travel Tribe. Okay. So here you can see all the content that everybody is publishing. So this is the content and this is Coastlines, Coastlines to Skylines and she's a member of the Blogger Union. <laughs> she actually won a Best Travel Blogger at the South Florida Blogger Awards. So, so she uh, added her pin to this uh, tribe. And if I wanted to uh, repin her pin, then I just click here and that's about something to do in Miami. And I have a board of things to do in Miami. And I have actually already repinned this pin for her. <laughs> but here you can add it to the queue. And so what's also important about Pinterest is that you don't are not supposed to only share your own content. You're supposed to share other people's content but it likes it more when you pin it from the original source than if you just repin other people. So this way you are getting 
double brownie points. You're doing the work of repinning other people <laughs> to be yes. to keep Pinterest happy, and you are making her specifically happy that you're repinning her pin, because here you'll get notified under yours. It'll tell you that this person repinned your pin. And as a thank you, I go back to all her pins. I can click on all her pins and I can find one that I like and repin it. And that way your pins get way more visibility because the more your pin gets repinned, the more, more Pinterest likes to show your pin. So it seems a little confusing, but once you get in there and you start putting your pins in there and sharing other people's, you'll see how it works. And the yeah. other, <laughs> your Pinterest dream, everything <laughs> you're saying, that's, that's what we would like content creators to do is to share the wealth, but also be very mindful, like do pin your stuff. Don't just pin other people's stuff, pin your stuff with fresh content. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So that's uh, Tailwind, but if you guys join the Blogger Union Tailwind Tribe that I just linked, we can all join there. And since we know each other, we can be more vigilant about supporting each other. And yeah. I can be in there and you guys can ask me questions about Pinterest through there. And Tanil is also going to join that Tailwind tribe. Yeah. <laughs> so that could be our own private little group. So that's what I wanted to show you about Tailwind. And I don't know if you guys have a second. I can show you really quickly about Canva, which was what Tanil was telling us about mm -hmm. um, and how easy it is to create your Pinterest graphics. So you go to canva.com, you click at the top where it says templates, and you just look for Pinterest graphic. And it really is literally that easy. They have gorgeous templates. Yes. And you can do any of these templates. And all you have to do is change the photo and the text. So let's say you like this graphic or you liked, yeah, you, let's say you like this one. You say, use this template. And you upload your own photos. And let's say we want to replace it with this one. And we double click it so that we can adjust the photo where we want it. And there you go. You have your Pinterest graphic. and All you have to do is download it and you're done. It's so yeah. easy to do this on Canva. So those are the tools that Tanil recommended. And you, honestly, those are the tools that <laughs> I also use. They're wonderful. Yes. So, and and that just shows you how quickly you can create fresh pins for your content. Since Pinterest wants new pins and they want it uploaded, try to give yourself like a template, create a template for yourself where you can just quickly create pins and create multiple and you can upload it onto Tailwind and put it on, on different boards and it's continuously pinning for you. Absolutely. When you're, when you're creating content or blogging or traveling or sleeping, you know, whatever the case is, because okay. you know, life happens. Exactly. And um, so let's was, dive quickly into the yes. questions. Okay. So first question I remember seeing is from Melina and she was asking about the keywords suggestions that were showing up in the search field. And mm -hmm. do you think those are location specific or they're just about like, those are just the most popular searches period. Those are the most popular searches period, but you can get location specific through Pinterest. So if you're a Miami blogger and let's say you do travel around Miami, type in Miami travel and see what pops up for you. And then you can use those keywords. Additionally, with, um, with that link that we shared, that Barbara, thank you for putting that in the chat. Um, there is a, there is this Pinterest tool that I use that helps me research as to when, what keywords I should use, uh, what hashtags are popular. And it also gives me a time frame as to what is being pinned within a specific month that, um, it shows the trends and it goes back to almost a year. So it won't show you future wise, but you can make decisions as to when should I start pinning for Christmas stuff? Because Christmas is very popular right now. People are tired of the pandemic. They're planning for the future. They're thinking already, uh, you know, Christmas outfits, recipes, decorations. And the, the trend is showing an upward incline of people searching for Christmas stuff. 
Are you talking so, about Google Trends or a specific tell? No, it's it's trends.pinterest.com. Trends.pinterest.com. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. So when you when you join in on that link that I sent or that Barbara put up for me, I give you a list of all the stuff that I use and just a refresher of tips that you should keep in mind when you're creating content, when you're writing your keywords and stuff like that. Okay, um, perfect. There was so, one more thing and I ran a blank. Oh, okay. But remember, <laughs> just, uh, just okay. blurt it out. <laughs> okay. Um, also, Milena was asking, is there a way to see how popular the keywords are? I know on Instagram, hashtags will tell you how many posts there are that use that hashtag. Is there something similar like this to Pinterest? No, uh, unless you look at that website that I just mentioned, it gives you an idea of how, how many searches are happening, happening with those words, but not necessarily like Pinterest, um, not like Instagram that gives us uh, an amount of searchability, like 10,000 views. No, there isn't anything like that. But if you look at that website that I just shared, it will tell you what people are searching for and the actual words that they used. Okay. So that's Perfect. beneficial. Great. But... I mean, that's what we have to work for, work with right now, so. Okay, perfect. Cynthia is asking, how about captions? Should you, you write captions like you're writing them in Instagram or shorter? There is a 500 character limit. So what you wanna do is make sure that you entice the click, letting people know what they're gonna get on the other side of that graphic. Absolutely. So, and also so add your keywords. Yes. And that's where you make sure those keywords are in there. You don't want to, uh, the keywords are in the actual title. You can put them, the description. And then that's where the rich pin will pull snippets from your actual website if you're pinning from your website. Okay. So it's very beneficial that you write captions or you write descriptions that, that are reader friendly. Don't keyword stuff. Don't put chicken, easy chicken recipe, right. chicken all day. No, don't do that. Make sure that they're actual sentences. Perfect. Okay, so Bella is asking, do they look at the domain as the same link? No, but uh, what if I link to different blog posts on, uh, on your website at the same time? Is that okay? What do you mean the different? So she's saying, can you pin different blog, pins to different blog posts on the same website on the same day? Or is yes. that considered spamming? Yes, yeah. as long as it's not the same website page. Right. As long as it's not the same blog post 10 consecutive times, you're, you're fine. If okay. it's blog post number one, then two, then the front page, and then your freebie that you have, your lead magnet, and your contact page, your affiliate link, whatever the case is, that's fine as long as it's different. Okay, so Cynthia is asking, how often do we post? And I know you uh, addressed this during the presentation saying, eventually you're gonna wanna post every day, but yes. if you want to expand on that. So if you are new to Pinterest, let's say this is brand new baby, go ahead and start to upload pins as you can. Once you get the hang of it, then I say start making it five times a day. And as you get your, your analytics, as you see the data come in and you notice the upward trends, that's where you start to make decisions. Well, let me bump it up to 10 times a day. Cause I have clients that pin up to 50 times a day, but because they have a lot of content and it's robust and we are in there digging deep into the data. And then I have another client where she would just pin 10 times a day. And we got her account to about maybe a million monthly views on Pinterest within the span of seven months, just pinning 10 times a day. Okay. Okay, so definitely learn as you go um, strategy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Okay. I mean, you, you never set it and forget it because people are like, oh, I'm gonna use Tailwind, I'm just gonna put everything there and I'm gonna walk out the door and never, you know, never look at it. No, <laughs> put it in there. And then analyze the data. What is working? What pin graphics are working for my account? 
Um, should I incorporate maybe an infographic? So you make decisions as you go. Do you need to be on it every day, like maybe Instagram? No, you don't. You can create the con content and put it in there and maybe check on it once a week. But okay. definitely um, don't, don't just make decisions willy-nilly and without <laughs> having some data. I always say use data to back up your decisions. Perfect. That is great advice. Uh, Marquita is asking, will the algorithm favor video pins similar to Facebook and IG is doing right now? It right now, what it's, it only favors it if the person clicks on it. So if the person clicks on it, then they'll show more video pins to that consumer that clicked on it. So that's why I say, give it a try and see how it works on your platform. Um, you can even create tiny video pins using Canva. So those animation GIFs, GIFs, whatever they call it, you can create that with your content and it could be maybe about 30 seconds to a minute and you can upload that onto Pinterest and see how it works for your brand. Right. So it's just giving you ideas, think outside of the box, how you can incorporate some of the stuff. If you have um, a lot of Instagram, um, content, stories, stuff of that nature. You can go ahead and upload that into Pinterest as well. See how it performs. And I, I forgot to, because I know Jennifer had an Instagram question. If you want to share your content from Instagram to Pinterest, you can use Tailwind to schedule those pins to go into Pinterest as well or you can use the IFTTT um, app that it'll zap once you, you pin, no, sorry, once you post on Instagram, it can take that post and directly put it on a specific board on Pinterest. And you can even claim your Instagram account on Pinterest as well through the back end on the business side. Perfect. And that's another way to grow your Instagram following too. It helps. <laughs> Every little bit helps. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Claudia is asking, should we start a business account with Pinterest? Would that help us? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, because okay. you, get, you get access to the analytics. And the yeah. analytics are going to help you make those decisions. Absolutely. So yeah. do you see that there's a blog post that is, that is getting a lot of traction. You're a lot of people are saving it. A lot of people are clicking on it to go to your website. And that's one that you want to create some more pins for because people like that content. So you want to make sure that it's fresh on Pinterest. Right. So Rogan is asking, does your Pinterest, business Pinterest account replace your personal account? Yes. It's the same account. It's just changing the status from personal yes. to business. Yes. Because it changes the status. So then you select which one. So just be, just be aware that if you're on your Pinterest account and you're searching for stuff, then you, and you're not on your consumer, you're going to get a feed full of other stuff that you were looking for on your personal side. Also, I just remembered, don't ever delete pins. Don't ever delete boards. Don't ever delete anything on Pinterest. If there is something that you no longer have on your website, on your blog post or whatever the case is, archive those pins because somebody saved it for a specific reason. If you, um, if maybe you didn't like the pin, you thought it was ugly and you're like, oh, I don't want this, just archive it. Cause somebody saved it and you don't want to cut off that link that they, uh, that they saved. Perfectly. Uh, awesome. So let's see if we can get through a few more questions cause I know we're already over time, but thanks so much for still hanging out guys. Um, Uh, so Bella needs a clarification and she's saying, okay, so we have to pin frequently throughout the day, but it shouldn't be the same, the same pin uh, to the same page. Um, so we should be pinning things from different pages on our website uh, in any one single day. And we, we actually just answered that question. So yes. yes. <laughs> so next. Yes. And <laughs> other it? blogger pins, just like you recommended from tribes, you can go ahead and pin other content. Because remember, we want to curate an account where people are going to see us as a problem solvers or the, the
the inspiration. If we're a travel blogger and we travel to different destinations, we definitely, and we have all of these informational articles on what to pack and how to pack and how to travel and how to get the best deals. And we want to curate an account where we are the go-to. We want to be the thought leader in terms of the brand or whatever it is that we're creating. So you definitely want to keep that in mind when you're creating the boards and when you're pinning content to those boards. So that's actually a good question. So you're saying we have to pin other people and we have to pin our own pin. Yes. What is a good ratio? Uh, what is a, how often should we pin three of ours and three of theirs? How okay, do so you recommend that? Uh, if you have very little content, I say do like the 20, the 80, 20, 80 other people, 20 of yours. Once you start to build a lot of content, start pinning more of your stuff and switch up the ratios. So play nice in the sandbox is what I always tell my clients and, and the adage that I've taken to heart. You want to create a, a platform that is informative with other people's content, but yours primarily, because remember, this is a business for you. You're not only going to promote other people's stuff, but if you don't have enough just yet, start with what you have and then incrementally grow where you're pinning most of your stuff. Uh, I, I, it all depends like six months from now, eight months from now, a year from now. Okay. So that's great advice. Thank you, Tanil. Um, so we have two more, uh, we have a few more questions, but I'm just going to pick two more because we're already o over time. So Ashley is asking, do you have any thoughts on Pinterest ads? Is it worth it? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> now, what I, and, and I say that with a smile because I do run Pinterest ads for my clients. So <laughs> when I see that, I was like, oh yeah. Now, what I want you guys to understand, Pinterest is a slow burn. So when you put something on Pinterest, it takes a while to gain traction. And it can take maybe organically, it'll take some time. With promoted pins, it puts it front and center to your audience, to the specific audience that you're selected with specific keywords because you're paying for it. And they're gonna put those up in front. And I recommend promoted pins if you have maybe a product to sell or if you have a short time span where you can't wait for it to take off organically. You have to push it out and you only have maybe 30 days for this product, then I recommend promoted pins. Because organically, I say, if you are going to promote something on Pinterest, it should be about 45 days before that event. So for example, if we're Right now, it would be too late to pin for back to school. Do I discourage it? No, absolutely, absolutely not. Get your pins up in there. Now, but if it is a product that you're depending on that you need eyes on specifically right now, then I would run promoted pins. So Halloween, start thinking about pinning that now. Um, start thinking about pinning Thanksgiving start thinking about pinning Christmas. And if you start, you'll see that it'll start to appear on your feed what people are pinning. So 45 days out organically, if you need it quick, promote it. That's great advice, because that's true. It just yes. takes some time to see mm -hmm. all the results of your efforts. Yes. Okay, and the final question is, um, that are affiliate links allowed on Pinterest? Because- yes. They didn't used to for some time, <laughs> but now they, they are allowed. What's not allowed are shortened links. Like how I use a bit.ly link, you cannot use bit.ly links. You cannot use pretty links. It has to be the original link to the affiliate product, whatever mm -hmm. it is. So, oh, can, so that means reward style links. You'd have to actually click on the link and use that long link that gets generated on the page yes okay yes. i don't use rewards but i i'm i i'm assuming that it has to be the original link it okay. cannot be a link that was changed or transformed by either shortening or anything of that nature right okay. you have to use original that's great news because yes you can use share a sale i use share a sale there you go 
because 10 years ago, yeah, they burned a bunch of pinners because they pinned a bunch of reward stallings and then they were all blocked. But yeah. I'm glad that's changed. Test it out. I don't, I don't know how to do rewards. I haven't done that one, but I've done share link, um, share sale. And that's been fine. Test it out with one pin and see how it goes for you. That's great advice. And if you know how, like you can use Link Ninja to generate your, your link. And if maybe you test it and that Link Ninja do, doesn't work, link doesn't work, then just put that Link Ninja link in your browser and then it'll give you a long URL and try that URL. Maybe that's how we can get around it. Oh, awesome. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know that one. I learned, <laughs> I learned something new. Awesome. So Tanil, thank you so much for coming and sharing all of your Pinterest insights with us and even going yeah. over time. <laughs> no, like I told you, I could sit here and talk. I could talk some more. <laughs> <laughs> so and we had talked about audits too, Paola. I don't know if oh, you want to yes, share the audit. Tell us about your audits and the services that you uh, provide about Pinterest before yes. we go. So Paola was asking me, well, how can, how can I work with with someone like you and I said well it just varies I do audits which is we sit together one-on-one -on -one and I go through your Pinterest account I tell you you know what changes you should make what boards you might want to add based on your website based on our conversation and it's a recorded call and you get to keep that call and make the changes as it is or you can hire me as your strategist and I take over. If you don't have a Pinterest account, I create your Pinterest account from scratch after a planning session because I need to get some insight into your account and find out, you know, what is your whole website about? Planning session and then we develop a pinning strategy for all of your content. Or if you have everything set in place, then, and you just need somebody to take care of it monthly, then I do that as well. And, uh, I get to, I get to, I've learned so much being a Pinterest strategist. I'm not vegan, but I can tell you all about the vegan lifestyle because I had a vegan blogger <laughs> and I learned so many things. I had no idea. So um, don't worry per se that, oh, she, she doesn't know my niche. Trust that I learn. And we, I always ask questions. I have no problem asking questions. So those are the various ways that you can work with me and I also run promoted pins. And if that's something that interests you, you can welcome to come to my website and check that out and we can chat. Okay, wonderful. Well, if you can please share your contact info in the chat before yes. we go, because before you guys go, all the info that was shared, if you click on these three little dots uh, in the chat, you can save the chat and it has all the links, every account everyone shares so you can go and follow everyone on Pinterest and on Instagram and click on all the Canva links and what have you and uh, get to Neil's email and I'm going to share mine too just in case I think someone was asking for my email in the chat um, and thank you everyone so much for joining us uh, we are actually going to have a small Canva um, tutorial webinar next week uh, where we're going to show you all the ins and outs of using, uh, making your first Canva, Canva graphic. If you guys want to join us, we'll have that on Eventbrite soon. And uh, we'll see you at the next webinar. Thanks everyone for joining us. Have a nice week. Thank you. Bye.